And we are in the studios in the home of Tom Reed. Welcome, Tom, and how are you? Okay, and you? Good. Now, you've been known as the Master Blaster for many years. Tell me what the Master Blaster is and what you used to do in radio. Well, you know, it goes back to radio from, say, 1962 until I left radio in 1976. Mm -hmm. I acquired the name in Kansas City, and uh, because, again, of my ratings as a disc jockey and uh, importance as it relates to the history of black music, uh, it all fell into place, leading to this book you see right here, The Black Music History of Los Angeles, Its Roots. Mm -hmm. It will go into, hopefully, a TV PBS series. Now, let me so, just talk a little bit about your experience in the back. I used to be on the radio a lot. Can you, do you, what were what some of your favorite radio stations that you were at and maybe some of the favorite music that you played? Basically, it was rhythm and blues and jazz. Mm -hmm. uh, KGFJ Radio here in Los Angeles, KMET, 1580 K-Day, and when I was in New York, it was at WLIB. In Detroit, it was WJLB. All outstanding urban radio stations. Why did you write the book? What inspired you? Well, you have to do it because this is a city that has a tremendous amount of black music as it relates to soul, jazz, rhythm and blues, spirituals, and gospel. It's a sad commentary that this mayor turned us down for a grant to do the book. Talk about Mayor Garcetti. You got it. Turned us down, his Department of Cultural Affairs. It's a sad commentary that he, as mayor of the city, in 2016, doesn't want us, our music, our history, to be documented. What was the reason given for not to... Uh... He didn't want to do it, simply put. It wasn't important to him or to his so-called audience, but to millions of people in this community, white, Hispanic, black, Asian, a big understanding of African-American music is important. And many of them know who Little Richard was and is. Many of them know who T-Bone Walker was. Many of them know about Nat King Cole, all a part of the black music history here in Los Angeles. And it's a sad commentary that it's so hard for me to get the kind of funds I need to put together such a great documentary about great African-American vocalists and musicians. Like Dexter Gordon, was nominated for an Oscar for his role in the movie Round Midnight, mm -hmm. a classic movie about a jazz musician. So many musicians in this city played great roles as it relates to the music of this city. Tell me a little bit about what you put in your book, and this is probably just the highlights. Well, basically, the stars of the music, the stars of the city's culture, the stars of the programs is that were a part of this city's history. Like Jump for Joy was created by Duke Ellington here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Many outstanding jazz programs for television were created by Steve Allen and Jimmy Baker and numerous other disc jockeys and producers. Th again, this city has an outstanding history of African American music that is yet to be documented. And we've got to do that. Our history is just as important as Jewish history, as Italian history, as Latino history. All histories are important to our culture. And to not to want to document the Nat King Coles, the James Clevelands, the T-Bone Walkers, the Coasters, the Penguins, all of the great artistry, black artistry, that came out of and recorded in South Central Los Angeles. Who doesn't want to know about Ray Charles? Who doesn't want to know about the great Nat King Cole and his daughter? So much has been documented here in this city, but for some reason, these people, those people who do the funding, would rather fund Ken Burns and his great documentaries on jazz and not even think about us and our great artistry that covers the sound of all popular music, including the creators of rock and roll. Now, you've just finished a book. 
sold out in Los Angeles. What's it called? The Black Music History of Los Angeles, Its Roots. And so the next step would be for you to do what? A television documentary series. And what's going to be in that? The whole concept of the music mm -hmm. of Los Angeles, the Black Music History of Los Angeles, Its Roots. And you've already shot some of the uh, documentaries. Oh, we've shot uh, about 20, close to 20 hours so far. Mm -hmm. How long have you been working on this? Two years. And what seems to be the challenge right now for you? Funding. Finding funding in terms of support for editing and further production. This is a very important part of history in Los Angeles. I would think that a lot of people would jump at the opportunity. What kind of reactions are you getting from who? Well, we don't get much from the so-called funding sources. The foundations like the Broad Foundation, the Getty Foundation, the Giffen Foundation, all of these so-called great funding opportunities bypass us. Why? I have no idea. What do you think and what do you think needs to be done to get the word out about this and uh, who are you looking for to help you fund this program? We would hope people that I mentioned would be able to do it. The city of Los Angeles, the county of Los Angeles, the Art Commission. There are many funding sources in the city, but for some reason they X us. We are not a part of it. But they do fund other organizations and other black organizations. How much funding are we talking about? We're pay? talking about thousands of dollars. Not one dollar, not five hundred dollars, but thousands. Mm -hmm. and you must understand, I've been on the radio uh, for many years. Not to mention our TV show has been on for over 30 years. And we're sponsored to keep that program on the air by Budweiser, by Verizon, by Toyota. People like that that helped keep the program on the air for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So it's not a difficult problem in terms of wanting to. If they want to, they could. And Budweiser and the others I mentioned knew how important we were as a community and the artist in that community. And so they helped us. They gave us a helping hand. But they knew down front that we were important. That is why they advertised on our program that was on for 30 years. So Mostly you, many documentaries. So you're looking for people that maybe want to do a fundraiser for you, an event that can raise money, and uh, this could be part of an, an annual event every year, like Black History Month, for example. Well, that's a whole different thing. That's just one month we're talking about when you say Black History Month. When you say L L uh, Latino History Month, these are just one month things. We're talking about something that's more important than one month. We're talking about the history of a people. People who are important in terms of their own artistry. People in terms of their own culture and their own history. We're talking about a bigger course as opposed to just a one-time shot. Now, when you we want to document the history of this music. Document those people responsible for this history. Now, when you were on the radio, who were some of your favorite people that you interviewed that are in your book and you want to put them in your... Basically, when book? I was on radio, there wasn't a whole lot of interviews. It was playing the records. Mm -hmm. We didn't do a lot of uh, interviews in terms of radio because the radio at that time was about the music and the disc jockey, whoever he was or she was, and the music they played. That is how they got over. That is how the station got over. Did you meet some of these people? Oh, I met a whole lot of people, man. Miles Davis, the Penguins, a lot of people that were part of the culture at that time. Who has inspired you the most over the years in, in, in what you're doing? Well, I think the people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, W.E.B. Du Bois, people like that, including Elvis Presley. How? Why? I'll tell you. If it wasn't for Elvis, what we call rock and roll never would have happened. Little Richard would be in the same category with uh, Elvis. He wouldn't have been there. Many of the early black artists never would have broken through if it were not for Elvis, because Elvis, in a way, set the tone for Little Richard, T-Bone Walker, and all the other great artists that came out of the South as artists that were a part of the creation of what we call rock and roll. So some of the documentary is, is shot and completed. How much more do you have to go? Oh, i got a lot more to do. It's, you know, we're talking about at least 30 hours to do it right, mm -hmm. to cover the roots of the music. And you're doing most of the, the shooting and, and editing? Doing the interviews, doing the shooting, doing putting it together, doing the editing. But I do have help with sometimes a cameraman, 
sometimes an audio man, but I do have people that help. Great. Well, this is good luck to you, and thanks for talking to us. Thank you.